Welcome back guys. Today in today's video we will actually build ourselves a fuse panel including breaker. This to actually protect the battery bank on my roof here. The layout that I have gone for is this type here. The breakers in question are normal battery disconnect breakers. They are made for somewhere around 50 volt. It's always good that you actually pick the ones that are working for your voltage. The fuses I'm going to use here is ANL fuses and I will be connecting it up in this order. Battery goes in in this end here, four of them, and then I will have some sort of combination panel on this side where it goes out to the inverter. When you choose the ANL fuses, you should be aware of that they are existing in two different types what I have found so far. One of them is rated up to 32 volt DC uh, meanwhile the other one is actually up to 80 volt DC and I'm going for the 80 volt DC ANL fuses. ANL compared to ANN that looks the same. It, the difference between them is that ANL is a little bit more slow blowing fuse and that's what I want in my scenario where I actually want to be able to overpower it just for a short while. The breakers itself is a simple type where you have the on, off and you can remove it to actually show that this one is disconnected now. And my plan is also to have some sort of voltage meter in between each one here so I could show the voltage of the system as well. To do this I would have a switch that actually can turn them on and off. To protect everything I will on top have a plexiglass uh, board uh, that is drilled hollow of course for all the devices and it can be removed to actually work on the fuses. We need to figure out what we are going to have in between them and as you can see in another video I have been using copper pipes and that's pretty simple and it works really really great by smashing them together roughly two and a half millimeter thick and 22 millimeters width and that should be able to cope with the current that I'm planning for the distance between here is roughly 55 millimeter, so that's what I'm going for here as well. The flush. And that's it. Important thing when you do it with this one is that you cannot leave this one too long out because otherwise it will hit the bottom and that will not work nice at all. So let's go to the next part and create everyone so we can hook them up. We now have those four created and are ready to go. It's time to do the ones that sit on the other end that goes out to the bus bar and they would be Almost the same except for no bend. So let me cut some of those up. Uh, I'm going to double up the thickness on this end and use two on top of each other. When we attach this, this will become the bus bar between everything uh, and the shunt will connect there. Let me drill a bigger hole in the middle that will be connecting it everything up. And this is basically how it looks like currently. So we will have all those here and then we have the bus bar for the outgoing on that side. I have double the thickness here, so I have two of them, so four millimeter thick and the uh, same width. So that should be more than enough to be able to cope with 200 amps or whatever. I have roughly 30 centimeters to go on this end and that's perfectly fine. And I have roughly 40 centimeters to go on this end to be able to fit everything nicely. And that seemed to be roughly right as well. To make the board that should go under this and then I need to start designing the protective glass above. I need to put it up in the CNC machine and start grinding away. When doing this sort of plastic, always make sure that you have enough cooling. That's the reason why I'm pouring over so much water on it. 
and you need sharp tools as well. Damn that fits good. <laughs> so damn good. CNC machine is the shit. Now it's time to cut it out, make this permanent. Same goes here, don't stress it, make sure it cools down. I'm fi filing the edges to get them to fit and I had to cut up, cut off some pieces of the metering. Uh, not a big task though, and that's the reason why, because I can't, with my CNC machine, get them totally square. Starting with the back side, not anything complicated here. Some glue, and then I used a uh, nail gun to attach them. Quick test fit to make sure that it still fits. Drilling holes in the cover itself and countersinking, and then drilling the tree. And it's not hard to paint outside, but that's how it is. Attaching the fuse holders. And then go back and attach the actual breakers itself. Making sure it still fits, and it does. The tricky part was the wiring here, um, I'm just attaching everyone to the meters, so I'm doing a harness for it. Heat rigging everything and such to make it very very neat. Attaching it to the meters and zip tying it together. This is the unit that will transform the upmost 60 volt down to whatever I want because the meters here actually do not tolerate more than 30 volts for driving it and that's a red wire here so I need this device in between otherwise it won't work on the other hand the sense wire the yellow one can do upmost up to 100 volts so that's fine so we will be mounting this as well and we will doing it very very simple in terms of Adding it there, two screws or something, and then it's done. Adding the switch for turning the meters on and off. I don't want them to be draining the battery while I'm not looking at it. Fuses going back in for testing. Don't forget to check out my links down below because you will have everything that I have used there, or at least close to what I have used. So here we have the finished product. I'm quite happy with it. And though in the ideal world you should use this on the positive sides instead because it's a little bit easier to get those actually working properly. As you can see they are not 100% uh, coordinated or tuned into each other yet. I will do that when I put it up on a big wall. And the reason for that is because I cannot test the full voltage here. I think I come up to roughly 30 volts or something like that. Uh, and you can see there are a little bit mismatches there, depending on how I do it. So basically, how is this functioning then? Here I will have the four battery banks. One, two, three and four. Um, I have fuses, 100 amp each. It's quite clearly visible from this side to see how it is going, except that one for now. I will sort that one, I just move the cable a little bit later on when I mount it. And we have four main switches here. And on this side over here, we have one switch that switches the meters on and off. And they are powered via this DC to DC converter. And that's because they won't function on higher than 30 volts. So I can turn them off 
and I can turn them on. So once again guys, uh, on this side is battery and on this side I will be mounting the outgoing so there will be a shunt there and then the cable goes out and that's why I have done it like this. And guys, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. If you want to support my work, check out the links below for Patreon and PayPal. And once again guys, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.